you are welcome to my channel today I'll be talking about hemochromatosis by definition hemochromatosis is a disease disease of what disease of too much iron that has been absorbed from the diet or from iron that the patient has taken either iron pills or intravenously or as a result of hemolysis when iron is released from the hemoglobin there is excess iron stored or there is iron overload the iron salts are deposited in tissues like liver the heart the pancreas and joints as the major affected organs it might be genetic in origin or could be acquired otherwise known as secondary epidemiologically more wives are affected than the rest people in this society and more males will show symptoms i'm not saying more males will be affected but more males will show symptoms so when it comes to the symptomatic presentation male to female ratio is five to one before no menopause in females but when you compare males to postmenopausal women the ratio is equal why that the premenopausal women will have menses every month childbirth generally no, many of them will undergo surgery cesarean section and co all modern men and through that more blood is lost in these premenopausal women compared to postmenopausal women that will not be losing no blood every month anymore and that are not, they are no longer giving birth anymore so there will be less iron that will be stored in tissues in women premenopausal okay because of menses childbirth and surgery more than men hence we are not going to see the signs and symptoms of hemochromatosis in women that have not reached menopause compared to women that have reached menopause and men that will never have menses there are different names given to this disease you now based on what the individual is trying to address if you open some literature you will see only primary hemochromatosis genetic hemochromatosis hereditary hemochromatosis they are pointing towards one thing or another person could write secondary or acquire hemochromatosis meaning it is not genetic it's caused by something else some will call this iron overload disease some will call bronze diabetes bronze cirrhosis pigmentary cirrhosis iron sorry disease or von Reck Apribon disease now the genesis of hemochromatosis either it is being called genetic or primary or hereditary hemochromatosis is all the same meaning this is running in the family and the focus will be on Europeans of Northern Europe I mean Northern European descent for types 1, 2 and 3 of hereditary or primary hemochromatosis still among Europeans of Southern European descent for type 4 of hereditary hemochromatosis careers don't have any clinical features but they can pass the defective or mountain gene to their children two career parents will have the likelihood of 25 percent chance of giving birth to a child with hemochromatosis in each pregnancy let me explain 25 percent chance in each pregnancy when it is autosomal recessive 
in autosomal dominant genes, we're going to get to that in a bit, it's going to be 100% chance of clinical features once it is present. Still on genetics, when it comes to hemochromatosis, inheritance is possible if parents are not one of the following. When it comes to autosomal recessive pattern of inheritance, that will be found in types 1 and 2. I will talk about autosomal dominance later on. So in autosomal recessive pattern of inheritance of hemochromatosis in types 1 and 2, is either both parents are carriers of the defective or mutated genes. If that is the case, it's very likely that they produce offspring that will have the disease. One parent is affected and the other is a carrier, it's likely. If both parents are affected, it's likely. The affected child must have inherited the genes equally, that is, one from each of the parents. Career offspring will have one normal gene and the other gene is defective. He or she will be phenotypically normal, meaning he or she will not come down with hemochromatosis, will not be sick. But he or she can transfer the defective gene the carriers can transfer the defective gene depending on who their future partner will be. Inheritance is also possible this time around when it is autosomal dominant pattern. And that will be found in hereditary hemochromatosis or primary hemochromatosis type 3 and 4. Only one defective or mutated gene is required here. You don't need to get you no know, one gene from the mother that is defective and another one from the father that is defective. No, just one, and the child will be down with you no know, genetic or hereditary or primary hemochromatosis. Once the offspring inherits that defective gene, just one of them, then the disease will manifest in his or life. One parent can be 100% normal, while the other parent has you no know, one normal gene and one defective gene, and he or she is deceased, and any child who inherits that defective gene from him or her will be deceased. Let me explain. In autosomal dominant pattern, one parent would definitely be diseased. The other one might also be diseased if he or she is having you know, two recessive genes inherited from his appearance or one dominant gene inherited from his appearance. Even if the other one is normal, all that is required here is just one defective gene inherited and the child will come down with hemochromatosis. Now, still on, and on genetics of hemochromatosis, there are four types. Type 1 is autosomal recessive pattern. The mutation is in HFE gene. That is the most common type. It is also called ferroportin disease. The symptoms will manifest from age 40 to 60 in men. Symptoms will mostly be after menopause in women. That is all about type 1. It's autosomal recessive. In type 2, it will also be autosomal recessive person. The mutation is in HJV or HAMP gene. This one is a bit different from type 1 because there will be juvenile onset hemochromatosis, meaning the signs and symptoms will start manifesting from childhood. At age 20, organs are already suffering. For example, 
There will be normal menses in females with type 2, but after some you know, months and years, the menses will abruptly stop. It will broadly hot. There will be delayed puberty in males. And both male and female will have shortage of sex hormones. The effect of hemochromatosis on the heart can kill anyone with type 2 young, as young as age 30, if not readily treated. But you know the light at the hand of the tunnel here, it is very rare. Now type 3. In type 3, this is autosomal dominant pattern. The mutation is in TFR2J. It is an intermediate between 1 and 2 when it comes to clinical presentation. The onset of symptoms is before age 30, but the light at the end of the tunnel here is also that is very rare. Now type 4. This is also autosomal dominant pattern. The mutation will be in SLC40A1. It's further divided into two subtypes, hemochromatosis type 4A or hemochromatosis type 4B. It's also called ferropotent like type 1 is being referred to. Some will have no symptoms at all here with type 4, while others will be down with symptoms can be type 4B that will have just benign symptoms from childhood or spanning through to adulthood. This is very common amongst wives of Southern European descent. Secondary hemochromatosis. This is also referred to as acquired hemochromatosis. Many. There is a disease elsewhere in the body, causing excess of iron to be accumulated. This might be as a result of liver disease, blood transfusion, thalassemia, sickle cell disease. Some will say, no, sickle cell disease in whites. Mm, no, no, no. Mm, and I'm not saying sickle cell disease in whites, it's in blacks, okay? And some Asians, okay? Sideroblastic anemia. A transferinemia, a cellulopalacinemia, chronic hepatitis C infection, chronic alcoholism, non alcoholic sterile hepatitis, excess ion pills may not even be in excess, but when it's taken with vitamin C, that will help in absorption of ion the more. Ion ingestions with vitamin C concomitantly, prolonged and repeated dialysis. Under these conditions, there may be too much iron absorbed, stored in the tissues, giving us hemochromatosis. Now, what are the signs and symptoms? It might be asymptomatic. For example, Type 4B hereditary hemochromatosis may have no symptoms. Males will start you know, showing symptoms earlier than females, even if they have been subjected to the same condition. And I've explained earlier. Females have more you know, protection because they lose blood every month, so they lose the iron. They pass through childbirth, even normal delivery, you still lose some blood. Some will pass through postpartum hemorrhage. Some will have cesarean section and can be normal on other situations that warrant you no know, surgery and they have massive blood loss. Anything that will send out blood from the system will reduce the signs and symptoms of hemochromatosis. That is why males are showing more symptoms. Than females. But when the females 
a fast child bearing age, no more menses, then we're all equal. So men will start at 30, some at 50. Females will not show signs and symptoms early except in type 2 hereditary hemochromatosis. Females' onset of symptoms initially after 50. Symptoms will reduce with menses, childbirth surgery, as there with massive blood loss, nobody is praying for that. And of course, frequent blood donation. Other signs and symptoms will include arthritis, bronze diabetes mellitus, bronze cirrhosis, bronze or gray color, abdominal pain, impotency, decreased libido or arrhythmia. Other signs and symptoms of hemochromatosis will include foggy memory, weight loss, heart failure, liver cirrhosis, leading to liver failure. And when there's liver failure, there's bleeding tendency, of course, because all clotting factors, except two, which will be von Willebrand factor and factor eight, are produced in the liver. So when the liver has failed in its function, then there will be bleeding tendency. Diabetes mellitus and heptomegaly. Other signs and symptoms include fatigue, and that is likely going to be the first symptom in women. Diabetes mellitus and liver cirrhosis will appear more in men. And why that? Okay, the, 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 here is the point. When men will be you know, showing the signs earlier, and is already there for a long time, then they will come down with chronic complications of the condition more than women. Reason for liver damage showing more in them than women. What are the possible aggravating factors? To you, there are good things, you are not doing anything bad, but as far as hemochromatosis is concerned, there are aggravating factors. You are taking your vitamin C, you buy your orange, you drink, you know, so many counts every day, or vitamin C tablet, or iron loaded multivitamins, you are taking them, or iron fortified foods, iron fortified cereals. You know what? You are worsening the situation as far as hemochromatosis is concerned. So, vitamin C, iron loaded multivitamins, and iron fortified foods will worsen hemochromatosis because it will add more. I, vitamin C will help in absorption of more iron, and all this iron loaded stuff will add more iron. Complications. When the heart is affected, there will be arrhythmia. When there is arrhythmia, there will be heart failure. In fact, there can be stasis leading to stroke from thromboembolic you know, system like that. And in the joints, arthritis, diabetes, mellitus, and of course infertility. If you are listening from the beginning, I don't need to explain further here. Other complications could include hypothyroidism, hypopituitarism, liver cirrhosis, liver failure, and with time, there will be liver cancer, hepatocellular carcinoma. How do you make diagnosis here? Thorough history. History of this condition in the family? Uncles? No. Of course. Are you white? Of course, I'm going to see that of northern European descent. Your ancestors are from northern Europe or southern Europe in certain cases. And of course, we can do physical examination you now, bronze body and so on. Genetic testing, screening before having babies, genetic counseling, for the couple. Still on diagnosis, we can head to the lab. Serum ferritin level, transferring saturation level, complete blood count, liver enzymes and liver function tests. There are two different things. You can check my channel for that. 
Tyrol function test, check my channel for that. HTTA stimulation test, want to know what is happening to the adrenal gland, check my channel for that also. Then random blood sugar, fasting blood sugar, hemoglobin A1C, peripheral blood film for target cells or sideroblast. Have your analysis on electrolyzed level, no acid. Radiologically, you can have magnetic resonance imaging, CT or ultrasound, and some centers could have superconducting quantum interference device. If you do, great. Treatment. Treatment is going to be via multidisciplinary approach. The hematologist, cardiologist, endocrinologist, rheumatologist, hepatologist, and GIT specialist. We can start from no, a little, then we'll go high. Now, first of all, involve the dietitian. Have balanced diet. Avoid iron fortified foods. Decrease the rate at which you take your vitamin C because if you take vitamin C at the same time you are taking iron, it's going to help in absorption of iron. Or you can take your vitamin C days that you are not taking the iron. Guide against infection by cooking your food properly, please, and follow all food hygiene protocols. With that, excess iron in your system will be good for bacteria to thrive. Decrease alcohol or just help yourself, stop it altogether. No iron peas because already you have excess. No iron loaded multivitamins because you have excess iron already. Still on treatment. There's no kill. That is a fact. Phlebotomy has remained the treatment of choice that is mostly adopted. About 250 mils to 500 mils of blood will be removed at regular intervals. But first of all, have complete blood count done. Establish that this is not a patient as a name. At induction, blood is going to be removed every week until iron level is within normal range. It can take several months before a normal range will be reached. Don't worry, don't be discouraged. Encourage the patient also. Maintenance is going to be for life, but maintenance will not be that will be removing blood every week. The frequency will reduce, might be every three to six months or every two to four months for life. Still on treatment, if phlebotomy is too difficult or too risky, you can start chelating therapy. Depending on where you are, is either diferosamine or just ferrosamine or whatever the name is right there. You can make use of that or ethnine, diamine, tetraacetic acid, EDTA. Now, you are not going home yet. When I'm going to cancel this patient, on depression. Don't feel too bad. No, 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 don't write yourself up. So I'm going to deal with this for the rest of my life. Oh my goodness. No, don't do that. Don't be down. So counsel against depression, anxiety. Encourage as per coping mechanism. Encourage family members. But genetic screening for relatives will be required at this point. Particularly to be sure that they are not dealing with inherited or hereditary hemochromatosis. And if that is the case, you have to be screening, and screen, even screening the spouses, or as the case may be. Lastly, the follow-up. It would be nice if you can report new symptoms, and the symptoms that are getting worse with time to your physician, so that 
he or she might be able to help you appropriately. If you follow this presentation from beginning to now, hereditary hemochromatosis should be traced back to the family, genetic screening should be done, and determine the type so that you know whether it's autosomal recessive or autosomal dominancy. And that will guide in your future marriages. And the secondary hemochromatosis should be traced to the specific cause or causes. And with that, you can have it under control. Don't give up, don't be depressed, a good rapport with your doctor will help you. With that, I come to the end of this very presentation. Thanks for listening. Remember to share this presentation. Remember to subscribe to my channel. I appreciate it.